The Wilderness Systems Pungo has been one of the best-selling recreational kayaks for around 25 years. Now that's impressive, especially when you consider that it's in the highly competitive mid-range kayak market. Wilderness System touts the Pungo as being the easiest to paddle and the most efficient kayak in its class with superior stability and premium comfort. Now that's a bold claim. And so in this video, we're gonna take a good look at the Pungo, take it for a test paddle, and make the decision ourselves. Does this boat still deserve to be one of the best-selling kayaks in the world? Before we get into it though, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell, because we have lots more paddling gear reviews, tips, and paddling adventures coming your way. The Wilderness Systems Pungo retails for $9.99 US dollars and comes in three sizes. The Pungo 105 is the shortest of the three. The Pungo 120, which is this kayak here, is designed for small to large paddlers. And then the Pungo 125 is for large and extra large paddlers. Of course, we are testing the Pungo 120. It's 12 feet, two inches long, 29 inches wide. It weighs 49 pounds and has a capacity of 325 pounds. Now let's take a quick look at some of the Pungo's key features. Starting on top, it has comfortable, heavy-duty carry handles on both ends. It has deck bungees on the bow and stern for stowing gear. And the ones up front can be adjusted to store different size gear, which is a cool and unique feature. It also has a secure rear hatch that seals easily with the turn handles. The truly unique feature of the Pungo is the removable dashboard that comes with the kayak. It has cup holders, a storage box, slide tracks so that you can easily add accessories like phone holders or rod holders, and it has a compartment for a lithium battery that's sold separately to keep your electronics charged. One thing that's noticeably missing for me is having a piece of slide tracks or gear tracks behind the seat so that you can quickly and easily add a rod holder and turn this thing into a fishing machine, although that's a very easy addition to make yourself. Inside the kayak, you have their Phase 3 Air Pro seat, which is fully adjustable and quick drying. It has low and high back support too. The padded cockpit rim is a nice touch for leg comfort, and it's got adjustable foot pegs, which are, in my opinion, an essential feature. Behind the seat, the Pungo has a bulkhead, which you don't always find in mid-range kayaks. As for the hull of the kayak, it's got a replaceable skid plate that saves the hull if you're dragging the boat to and from the water. All right, let's take this bad boy to the water and give it a real test. Well, I've been paddling for about 30 minutes now, and that might not seem like a lot of time to test a kayak, but I really feel like I, I have a good taste for what this, this kayak is all about. In fact, this isn't the first time I've tried this kayak. I, last time I tried the Pungo was probably about 15 years ago. I've tested a lot of boats since then, so I don't really remember if it's changed since then. But what I can tell you is that uh, it's different than I was expecting it to be, uh, and not in a bad way. A lot of the kayaks these days seem to really put a strong, strong emphasis on primary stability, initial stability. How stable is it when you just sit in the kayak? And a lot of times, they, uh, kayaks have flat hulls, very flat, so that it's as stable as possible when people sit in it. But this kayak, it has a V-hull. So it doesn't have the absolute highest stability. It's not the most stable kayak or stable feeling kayak. Don't get me wrong, this is still a super stable kayak, but 
with the V-hull, it doesn't give up speed for stability. And so this boat is fast. It's surprisingly fast for a 12 foot boat. And I really like that. I love that. In fact, I don't need the, the very high end instability. I like something that's just stable. I mean, it's something I could put uh, anybody in and they'd be comfortable in it. And that's this boat, but it also, it's gonna cruise. And especially on a day like today, we found a nice calm spot here to stop for a minute and, and talk about the boat, but it's a really windy day. And so paddling in some heavy winds, uh, it was a great opportunity to test this thing, uh, not just how fast it is, but also how well it tracks. It does a great job of keeping a line without having a rudder or a skeg. So paddling performance, I love it. Nice and fast. Stability, no, it's not the most stable kayak you're gonna get into, but what it gives up in initial stability, it gains in secondary stability. And that's the stability it has when it's on edge. I mean, it literally, as soon as you put it on a bit of an edge, it just wants to sit there. It feels great that way. Maybe that doesn't matter to you if you're not, you know, uh, if you're just going for a nice little cruise and you want a boat to stay as flat as possible. But for someone like myself who likes maneuvering around stumps and trees and under stuff, it's nice to have a boat that's great on edge because that helps you turn the boat. Comfort wise, well, you know, this phase, uh, what is it? The phase three air pro uh, seating system. It's fantastic. I don't know what phase I was on when, when I tried the Pungo last 15 years ago, but it was, I remember it was really comfortable. This is even a, a nice step up. It's got so many adjustments. The seat, you've got a piece here that you can pull up and it provides support under your legs, which that might not mean much um, if you've never paddled a long day, but having your legs supported from underneath after for a long day of paddling is a real bonus the back support is great and being able to easily adjust it forward and back you know i have nothing but good things to say about the seating um the foot pegs are wonderful too this is not a small person's boat uh, they call it a small to large paddler's boat and it is i'm six foot two 200 pounds i feel totally comfortable in this thing i could be much heavier um, but the foot uh, pegs too. I have them about only two thirds of the way down there, if that. So you could be considerably taller than I am and still be very comfortable in this boat. Uh, feature wise, you know, we looked at the features before and um, it's got everything you need. It's, it's very simple in the features that it has, but it's got everything you need. And this, this dashboard is a cool feature. Having right in front of you, having a, a little dry box for your, for whatever you want to carry there, cup holders, you know, a track to mount, um, a, uh, an X grip to hold a cell phone. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to have right there. I was worried that this dashboard would be a gimmick and really a pain in my butt when I was paddling. I would knock my knuckles on it. It would be a problem with my knees, you know, being a tall person. I just expected it to be a hindrance rather than a, a help. Um, but it's proved me wrong. You know, lots of space. It doesn't make me feel um, confined. It doesn't, it's not in my way at all. It's not even an issue for paddling. It's a nice, it's a nice feature. Would I use it all the time? I don't know. I don't know if I would use it all the time, but it really is a nice feature. And for the price point that this cat comes in, um, it's a unique feature. It's a unique selling point for sure. Well, that's about all I have to say about the kayak right now. I'm going to keep paddling. I've got about 15 minutes to get back to the launch and um, we'll see if anything else pops to mind. Well, the question remains, does this kayak deserve to be one of the best selling kayaks in the world? My answer to that is, yeah, I think it really does deserve to be one of the best selling kayaks in the world. Uh, even, I think it's been around for 25 years and I'm sure they've made improvements to it along the way, but it's 
a solid, solid kayak in all ways. I mean, bang for the buck, you really are going to be hard pressed to find a kayak that delivers better value. There, I know there are, and I've tested some of the kayaks that provide very comparable value. So I'm not ready to say that this is the best kayak in the world, but it is deserving to be one of the best selling kayaks in the world. There's no doubt about that. How to choose between this and other mid-range recreational kayaks? Well, it really comes down to what's most important to you. Uh, for this one, I think the biggest takeaway was uh, you give up a little bit of stability for speed, for uh, ease of paddling, efficiency of paddling. It, this thing's a fast recreational touring kayak, and I really love that about it. Yes, you give up a little bit of stability, but it's still a very stable boat. I'm six foot two, 200 pounds, no problems here. I think this boat would be great for someone up to uh, 240 pounds uh, very easily. So really, in the end, anyone looking for a recreation, a fast recreational touring kayak where you can cover ground, have fun paddling, and not just, you're not just concerned about having a kayak that's as stable as as possible <laughs> then uh, this is a wonderful choice you won't be disappointed i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please do subscribe to paddle tv if you haven't already and stay tuned because we've got so many more uh, kayak reviews as well as canoe reviews sup reviews and lots of tips paddling adventures the works they're coming your way if you have one of these boats spend some time in this boat more time than i have more than 45 minutes then please let us know what you think in the comments down below or if you have any questions leave a comment and i'll get back to that as soon as i can thanks for watching